There's been a lot of focus on Microsoft's new co-pilot agents like Analyst and Researcher, but while everyone's been excitedly trying these out, there's been a quieter entry to the stable of available agents, and this one is probably going to be even more revolutionary, Facilitator in Microsoft Teams. Facilitator helps you run your meetings, not by you chatting with it, but by proactively getting involved. It's a completely new experience for what an agent can be, and it probably tells us more about the future of AI in the workforce than many other agents ever could. So let's jump into an exploration of Facilitator. How do you get it? How do you use it? And what benefit does it bring? Hi, I'm Nick. I help smaller businesses achieve more using AI specializing in Microsoft 365 Copilot and Copilot Extensibility. If you'd be interested in finding out more about how I can help you, check out the links down in the video description. And if you find this video useful, it would be great if you could like it, share it, and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. This is Facilitator at Work. Within the scope of your team's meeting, and also your group chats, it is an agent that can proactively help to record the details of what's going on, what needs to be done, and keep you on task. I now activate Facilitator in pretty much all of my meetings, as unlike a meeting transcript or post-meeting summary, with Facilitator taking notes, I can check that it's understanding the context in real time, rather than just coming back to a summary a week later and getting slightly off information. So first, how do you get it? Well, Facilitator is still currently in preview in targeted release, but as of the recording of this video, it's slated to start rolling out to general availability in July 2025. And if you can't wait that long, then you'd need to get the preview version of Teams. And because this is a Microsoft 365 Copilot feature, you also need a full paid license for that product. Additionally, you need loop-based experiences to be turned on and available to you. However, in terms of licensing, Facilitator is kind of an oddity. The Facilitator agent is kind of like an agent persona that sits in your meetings or chats to do work with you. To add it, you have to have a Microsoft 365 Copilot license, and to interact with it, you need that license too. But to see the work it produces for you in meetings, you just have to be present in that meeting. In chats, unfortunately, you do need the license. So for example, the notes that Facilitator creates are available to anyone with access to that meeting. So it's important to realize that even in organizations where not everyone has a Microsoft 365 Copilot license, Facilitator can still add value for everyone depending on their context, unlike other agents like Researcher where you only see it if you have the license. Assuming you have access to Facilitator, there are a number of ways to get started with it. I'm going to focus on meetings. So as you can see here, I'm creating a new meeting in Teams and I can simply turn Facilitator on. That will also enable transcription. Or if I have an existing meeting like this one, I can enter the meeting settings and turn on Facilitator. And lastly, in a meeting itself, I can just access the menu options and turn on Facilitator. In a chat, it has to be a group chat, not a one-on-one -on -one and not a channel chat. You can also turn on Facilitator through the AI Notes option. Facilitator will similarly then start taking notes. When it comes to meetings, the work Facilitator does leverages the new loop-based meeting notes experience. And when you turn on the option for Facilitator, you'll see that experience appear below in your meeting invite. And that option to turn on Facilitator appears whether you're in the new or old calendar experience in Teams. Unfortunately, the same is not true for Outlook. Create or open an upcoming meeting in Outlook, and you don't get the option for Facilitator in the invite, nor will you see the new meeting notes experience connected with Loop, which is frankly just yet another odd failure of ecosystem integration on Microsoft's part, given that if you open a meeting that has occurred, that has a Loop meeting notes page, Outlook is perfectly happy to show it to you along with the recap. Facilitator ideally sits within a new workflow where for your meetings you build out this notes page with an agenda. At the start of your meeting, Facilitator will call out the need for your participants to refer to this agenda. Then it will go ahead and populate notes and follow-up tasks throughout the meeting. Post-meeting, if you're a Loop user, you can add these notes into a Loop workspace and continue working with them. As for tasks, if you accept the ones Facilitator creates and assign them, they will create to-dos for those assignees, just as is the case for normal loop-based task lists. And overall, it really is a pretty great feature. But there are some other nuances and downsides that you should probably know about. 
One of the things that looks pretty cool with Facilitator, but I'm not set up to try here, is that it can also interface with participants using Teams rooms. The workflow seems to be that a QR code is shown on screen and then those in the room can pick up the notes on their mobile device. This is important, as just like other collaboration in Loop, everyone can work on these notes alongside Facilitator. Now, there is a big downside to this, and it's the same foundational downside we run into with so many aspects of Copilot in Teams. And that's that it's fantastic as long as the only people you're meeting with are inside your organisation. Just as for external meetings Copilot isn't available, access to Facilitator or even Notes aren't available either. In fact, if you're setting up a meeting with externals, the new loop-based meeting notes feature is a really bad place to keep your agenda, as none of those external people will even necessarily know what that meeting is about. The fact that we are now coming up on two years of Copilot being out in the wild, and even more for Loop, and these becoming such a big part of Teams, which by default is designed to allow you to communicate and collaborate with people both inside and outside your organisation, yet these basic issues of these new experiences being utterly inaccessible to external users is kind of crazy in my opinion. And I've said before that this lack of focus from Microsoft on cross-organisation accessibility of these types of features necessarily makes their tools less useful for smaller organisations, and it's often only big corporates that have the scale for all parts of a project to be handled internally. But outside of that big downside, are there any others? Well, I don't think so much downsides as opportunities for improvement. First, Facilitator doesn't really keep you on your agenda other than highlighting where to look at it. It doesn't, for example, interject into your meeting to tell you that you're 40 minutes into your hour and you've only hit one topic so far. In simple terms, the person facilitating your meeting should definitely do that. But there are always going to be opportunities for improvement like this, and I'm sure Microsoft will be focusing on delivering them. I can imagine in the future of us having agents with lots of different functions in our meetings. Perhaps Whiteboard becomes just an agent with the AI taking over the pens entirely based on the content of the meeting. Or Forms has a survey agent that you can collect feedback in real time based on what's being discussed. This paradigm of a participative and collaborative agent, rather than just a chatbot, is one we should all be looking at, as it is this that will probably start to slowly take some of the functions people do today, rather than the one-on-one -on -one assistance we've seen so far. Have you tried Facilitator yet? What did you think? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.